Hello and welcome to this video on an introduction to pivot tables in Excel. This video will show you how to create your first pivot table and then take you through all of the essential pivot table skills to analyze and report on your data. This is our sample data set with some sales data and some information that we can use in our analytics such as the sales rep, the region, and also the product category that was sold. Now this data set is formatted as a table, and you can see the table is called sales. So it'll be nice and easy for us to bring this into a pivot table. All we need to do is click somewhere amongst the range, and on the insert tab, I can click pivot table, this create pivot table window appears and prompts us where our table or range is. So your data does not need to be in a table, it could just be a range of cells, but it is encouraged to be one and you can see how Excel automatically detects and picks that up. It then asks us where we would like the pivot table, whether it to be a new worksheet, which they will create for us, or an existing sheet. I'm going to leave this as a new worksheet and click OK. So that new sheet is created and the pivot table is on the left hand side, not looking too impressive right now. And on the right hand side, we have the field list, which is what we will use to build and organize our pivot table. We have the columns from our data set, just those five columns and underneath four what they call areas which is what we'll be using to organize it. We have filters, columns, rows, and then values. Along the top, we have two tabs on the ribbon. We have one called Analyze, and we also have one called Design. The Design tab will have buttons you probably expect, you know, around you know, the, the, the style and what information is shown, the design of the pivot table, and the Analyze tab is a lot busier with a lot more interesting uh, buttons that will have more functionality. So a pivot table is really a summary tool. That's what it is. It's a, it's a great reporting tool. It summarizes data. So for example, if I wanted to know uh, the performance of these different products, we could come over and tick the box for category. So that's the product category. And it lists in alphabetical order all of the product categories from my data set. And then if I tick the box for sales, which is the total value, it then just simply sums all those values. So as easy as that, we have the total sales, the total revenue from each of those product categories that we have been selling. You can see in the field list that when I ticked both of those boxes, it put the product category in the rows area because it was text and we didn't tell it where to put it, so it assumed that's where you want it. And then the sales uh, value was dumped into the values area and the sum calculation was applied. Please don't be misled by the little sigma icon, the sum icon above that area. It does other calculations outside of sum. That symbol is just indicating that that is where the calculations happen. If you put a number in that box, it defaults to sum. If you put text in there, it defaults to a count. But we can change that. So if I did want a count here, I could right mouse click on any number in the pivot table, come to summarize values by, and simply switch it to a count. And now I've got how many orders as opposed to how much money. I can always right mouse click a number and switch it to a different function, such as an average or a max, or if I click on more options, there are a few more in here. If I scroll down, but not that many. There's about 12 functions or so. But the main three, if I choose some right now, some count and average are available from that little pick list. If I click OK, I'm back to a sum. Now looking at these values, something else you might be thinking is about the format of them. They all show two decimals, which is consistent, but do we really need to know those decimals when we're looking at values of this size? 
So I'm going to right mouse click a number again, and I'm going to choose number format. Number format is generally encouraged to over format cells. They will both format them, but format cells is a physical thing. It formats the cells you've selected, and I've currently only got one cell selected. Number format will format the entire cells field. So long term, if this pivot table is going to be changing uh, in, in size, then number format will take care of business and format cells won't. If I choose number format, very similar environment here, I will choose accounting, take out the decimal places and click OK. And we've now got it looking as it should, but also consistent and a little bit more clarity when those decimals are removed and that thousand separator is applied. Now coming back to the field list, there's nothing stopping us bringing other fields in here. So I have category, but we could grab the region, which are different countries, and drag this into rows. Now dragging gives us more control rather than ticking as to where this field is applied. And you can see on screen at the moment that I'm able to drop it above or below category. And this will change the order that it's going to break this down. So if I drop it underneath category, it will have the category of products like alcoholic drinks and then other beverages. And you can see the breakdown of the regions within that. Now I could come over and drag those the other way around. And now we've got the region first and the total from that region all in alphabetical order. And then within that, uh, those product categories. Now we've also got a columns area over here as well. So if this was getting a little bit long, then we could move region maybe into this columns area. So now we've got the regions coming down in the column and the product categories come along as a row. And this can help the way that we compare values if that's what we're trying to do. Because I can compare the country totals now side by side, which is just more typical behavior for us to compare things in that way. Side by side versus above and below is quite normal. If I do bring the region back though, and if I do drop it um, above the category, now, something else we might be considering here is sorting this data. And I almost made a mistake a moment ago when I was looking at the values and I um, looked to see that the wrong one was on top. So rather than sorting it alphabetically, which is the default, both for country and also for category, we could right mouse click a category number right now, sort it largest to smallest, and it's not just going to sort the categories in Australia, no. It's going to sort all of them. So notice how the countries remain still, Australia followed by Belgium. But within them, categories sorted, scroll down to Belgium, categories sorted, scroll down to Canada, categories sorted. And we could do the same to the countries if you wish. I could right mouse click a country total, such as Belgium's total, sort it largest to smallest. And now we've got the UK followed by Australia at the top. And we have a breakdown of the category sales still in order as we told it within there. If we want the countries back in alphabetical order, right mouse click a country such as Australia on its name, sort A to Z, they jump back to the top followed by Belgium, still the category large to small, as the pivot table will maintain the order, even when this pivot table updates or as you change stuff, which is very different to how we sort in a normal list. Different, they shouldn't really be compared, but whereas that's a manual sort, this is going to auto update and hopefully you got a, an idea of that there. So that is how we can change the order of them. Uh, we do have another field over here, which is our filters. So it might be worth checking that out. Maybe I could drag region into the filters box instead. And then with all these product categories, I can simply use the filter drop down and choose what region I want, rather than trying to show them all at the same time. Notice how it's still in order. So if I choose this filter drop down now, and I select Belgium, now I'm just focusing on the totals from Belgium. Or if I come up here and I choose the Netherlands, only looking at those, rather than trying to show everything at the same time. And I've got too much data here for that, especially if I was creating a report, that you, you, you can't really give somebody that. Uh, this is much more interactive. Now I'm going to come back over and remove the region from there. 
because something else that's good to look at is how we can group values. There's something else that's important to know. So I'm actually going to remove category as well. I'm going to put region in there because there's not so many regions, just a simpler pivot table to look at. And we're going to bring in date. Now, if I can just take us back to our pivot table data, the dates are the exact date, which you probably would have expected. But maybe we're being asked how much we're making on a monthly basis, how much we made in January, how much in February. So we've got the information, but we also kind of don't. I've got the 1st of January, which nobody was asking me for. So in the pivot table, if I drag the date field into rows and drop it before region, this is what we get. In the latest versions of Excel, it auto groups numeric fields and you drop them in such as date and time. And it's not always going to get it correct. And this is the scenario here. Depending on what dates you get, depending on what uh, auto grouping reaction you're going to get. I've got month. Yes, I did want that. That's, that's great. But I've also got the day and I didn't want that. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is just right mouse click on any cell that's got a date in it, such as the 2nd of January, and come into group. Now, older versions, so I think it was 2016 where this auto-grouping started to happen. Older versions won't auto-group, but you can always do what I'm doing here. It's not a big deal. I don't really like the fact that it auto-groups. I'm going to click on group. I can then take out days because I'm not interested. And if I was interested in other stuff, I can simply select it. So I've only got one year's worth of data here. This is my whole range, eight months. But I could, if I had other years, click on years. So it would break it down by years first and then months, or indeed even choose quarters. I've also got this increment of days down here. I'll take out years, it's irrelevant here. Click OK, now I've just got those monthly totals. That is what we wanted. And we can see the countries or the region's performance of that month too. Now, this is a typical situation where somebody would drag the date into the columns box to the right. So as I drag it over to there, you know, looking at some kind of timeline left to right is how we work. Uh, we view text in a vertical way as a list and we view dates in a left to right horizontal way. So this immediately makes more sense and looks better than what it did a moment ago. We could even drag date into the filters area and use it as a filter as that's how we applied. So as we're learning pivot tables, a great thing about pivot tables when you're learning, probably more so or as much as any other feature of Excel, is you really can get involved and just play around with this data and it can be a lot of fun, especially if it's data that you care about or you're, you're interested in. Because this is just a representation of the data on the other sheet. We're not touching the data. We're just representing it in a way that makes sense to people, uh, typically used in some kind of report or dashboard. So if it goes wrong, you can always just remove it and start again. There really is no risk here. And by playing around, we will be learning. Now, a couple of last things I want to quickly touch on. Uh, next up is that we can refresh pivot tables. Let me just remove that date uh, from here for one moment. So I've just got a simple pivot table on the regions because pivot tables do not automatically update. So whereas we might be used to formulas and conditional formatting and charts auto updating when, when, when values are changed, pivot tables don't. So if I was to come over to the table, so looking at the countries we've got here, and I'll just do a silly example to demonstrate this. If I shoot to the bottom of this list, and yes, we have 3,896 rows in this sample data set. Let me just put in some pretend information. Like it's 24th of August. Uh, let me just repeat uh, rock. But then I'll put a different country. Not in the list. Uh, Slovenia. I'm not in the list. And then I'll just repeat the herbs and spices. And then I'll just put some kind of number in here. So if I come over now, notice how the table expands, all the benefits of using tables. If I come over to my pivot table, Slovenia is not here. But that is because we need to either right mouse click and refresh from the shortcut menu, or we've got it on two tabs at the top. We can find it on the analyze tab of the pivot table or refresh with a refresh all option. 
but I would encourage the use of the refresh button on the data tab. Because if we use the one on the data tab, we could refresh all of our pivot tables, doesn't matter what sheet they're on or how many there are, we could do all of them, and we don't even need to be on that sheet. So from anywhere in a workbook, it can be at up to three clicks maximum kind of to refresh everything. And Slovenia comes in, notice the alphabetical order. Yeah, it reshifts it all. So if I just want to update this one pivot table, right click refresh, all of them, data refresh all would be what I would advise. So I'm just going to come over and remove Slovenia now because it looks a bit silly with just that 20 pounds. Just going to delete that row, come back over, refresh my pivot with a right click. Because the final thing to say in this video is to create a chart. So this table looks great, but a chart would maybe be better. I'm going to pop up to my Analyze tab, click on Pivot Chart, which is five from the end. And then I can choose what chart I want. I might just keep with a classic column. Not all of these charts will work with pivot tables. If I come to, for example, a scatter, you see it's not available as a pivot table, which is a shame. You do get more from charts with your normal charts. I'm going to choose column though, click OK. And I have no plans to do any more with this chart in this video. This is not really what the video is for. Uh, but I could remove that, that legend, for example, and then start performing other uh, improvements to this chart. If any changes are made to the chart, it will affect the table, and any change to the table will affect the chart, even if the chart is moved to another sheet. And that concludes this video. I hope you find it useful as a simple introduction to getting your first pivot table off the ground and covering essential skills uh, such as sorting, grouping, changing calculation, uh, filtering, and being able to update it and present it in a chart format.